We've uncovered that for 30 years, our nuclear bombs are protected by only the feeblest of locks. And that even today, a Trident nuclear submarine commander could launch their missiles without Whitehall authority. Fears that a standoff like the 1962 Cuban Missile Crisis could turn into World War III prompted the Americans to put what's called a Permissive Action Link, or PAL, on every bomb. Put simply, a PAL is a fancy combination lock. So were the British as careful? This is what the British bomb looked like. From the 1960s to the early days of the Blair government, this was the standard issue nuclear bomb for the RAF. We're going to open it up and see just how sophisticated our security really was. Helping us is Brian Burnell. He's been researching Britain's nuclear history for years. This is the actual aircraft that dropped the first thermonuclear bomb at Christmas Island. By digging around in the public record office, Brian's learned quite a lot. He's found that the British military resisted attempts to put their bombs under Whitehall's control with PAL locks. Brian discovered that in 1966, when Dennis Healy was Defence Secretary, his chief scientific advisor told him that Britain needed to install permissive action links, or PALs, on the RAF and Royal Navy's nuclear weapons to keep them safe. He wrote, The government will need to be certain that any weapons deployed are under some form of ironclad control. The files marked top secret and atomic show that the Navy agreed that the Prime Minister had the right to demand permissive action links on Britain's nuclear weapons and that technically it was possible, but they really didn't see the need. After all, this would be tantamount to suggesting that officers of the Royal Navy, the senior service, were not true gentlemen who could be trusted not to set off nuclear weapons on a whim. The Navy felt rather slighted they felt that uh, they could be trusted with these weapons. They felt that a physical link to put a lock on the bombs um, simply wouldn't work under those conditions. Whitehall never did get remote control of RAF or Navy bombs right up until the last RAF nuclear bomb was withdrawn in 1998 after Tony Blair arrived here. The official line was that only the Prime Minister could launch a UK nuclear weapon. And it's true that only the Prime Minister could send the codes authorising an attack. The problem was that there was no proper locking system on the UK's nuclear bombs to stop a launch without those codes. The Dr. Strangelove scenario. The Americans had their dual key system. The missile crews had to wait for the code and key it in before they could arm the weapon. Without it, the nuclear device was useless. What the V-bomber crews, but very few others, knew was that the British setup for a fail-safe against a mad general was a little less sophisticated, as Newsnight can now reveal. The Ministry of Defence gave this group of enthusiasts at the former RAF Kemble airfield a nuclear training weapon used by the V-bomber crews, identical in every way except with no plutonium warhead. There was also a set of keys, but they didn't know what these were for until Brian came along. So what do you need to do then to arm one of these? You need so the codes and the, the dual keys? How does it work? No, there are no codes. Um, first of all, you just need to get access to the, uh, uh, to the arming panel. And for that, just a strong fingernail or a screwdriver would do. Right. Um, and um, the, like so. There's only one key. There only ever was one key, rather similar to a, a bicycle lock key. Right. And it inserts in here. And that's and, to arm it, is it? And turns 90 degrees to the right and the bomb's armed. Traditionally, there was one arm of the US nuclear deterrent exempt from PALs and codes, the submarine fleet. But in 1991, President Bush Sr.'s fail-safe commission found that the risk of an accidental or rogue launch was too high. By 1997, the Americans had fitted all their Trident subs with coded systems that meant they could only launch a missile if the president had sent an encrypted code from the outside. The British were operating the same submarines and the same missiles, so had the British made the same security upgrade? The Ministry of Defence said such safeguards are not relevant to the British situation. We rely instead on the integrity of 150 personnel on board, 
trained to launch an attack only in a prescribed set of circumstances. In fact, we have a deliberate policy of allowing a Trident submarine commander the independence to launch an attack without an external code so that we have an assured nuclear deterrent, even if the worst has happened and there is no Whitehall to give the go-ahead. The Americans, the Russians and the French have all decided they can't take the risk. But Britain says it's confident that because the ship's company on a Trident submarine is trained to spot a rogue commander and deal with them, could never happen.